scrolling. Nobody knows who they are at 17. An odd number, and for me, an odd time to grow up. Or did I? No. I'm still figuring things out. Two friends who didn't know each other or who they were, but who would later shape me. My best friend Martin hung from the shower curtain rod by a towel wrapped around his neck, livid, pale, lips blue. That's when I started to run. I didn't get very far. Derelicts, crackheads, junkies, coppers, pimps, hoes, druggies, boozers, hustlers, starfuckers, street musicians, charlatans, Hare Krishnas, religious freaks, Jehovah's Witnesses, fairies, trendsters, hipsters, and lastly, runaways, line the streets of Manhattan. But in the five block radius where I pounded pavement, day and night, they converged. $500 is what I left with, but with only one option, to return home. A thought that ran through my head whenever I feared being mugged or chased away from my sleeping spot by some nut hurling a hatchet. Esther was 16 when I first met her, and it wouldn't be for another year till I would see her again. Tall, lanky, and clumsy, she stood at the pizza place on the corner of 8th and Avenue A. Calling out my name as I walked by, she wasn't the same girl I remembered from high school. She had the same clothes, but her arms were scattered with needle track marks. We spent four months that winter, creating all kinds of trouble in Lower Manhattan, whether it was ripping off Korean shopkeepers or selling grass mixed with oregano to the jocks who would hang around the park after school. Every Saturday afternoon, I would go to the clinic and pick up Esther's methadone, but I would always find her passed out in Tompkins Square Park somewhere. Four months later, Esther's arm would be dangling from the stretcher. No more breaking fire hydrants, sneaking into the public pool for a bathe and shower, stealing leftover food, or picking up Lucy's off of the street. It was all over. Sure, we used to get high together, but it was never smack, just grass. Sure, we saw people get arrested, but never dead. Going to the pier late at night, walking around the High Line, using leftover spray paint cans to scribble on the inside of the tunnel. Things we could reminisce about when we were both gone. Where does one go from here? Back? To simply shuffle through the mindless things? The petty bits and pieces that don't change a thing? One can only go through it quietly, but stubbornly sift through the clutter. Thank you.